Hello, everyone. Welcome to This, That, and the Other, where we talk about Detroit and Michigan State sports. And anyway, that was Michigan State and Rutgers. Um, I guess you could say our expectations were that low, but holy, holy crap. <laughs> Man, um, 38-27, to 27, Rutgers pulls out the victory thanks to six Michigan State turnovers. Most of them fumbles, uh, two Rocky Lombardi interceptions, and you know Rutgers was able to pull up, pull away with a victory. Never really was all that close, if I'm being honest. Closest Michigan State got was uh, 28 to 20, I believe. So <clears throat> um, Rutgers scored on their opening drive. That was a kind of a statement for them, and they. Um, they, Rutgers didn't play great. I'll give, I'll say that. I mean, you know, total yards. Um, Noah, Noah Vedral with 168 yards, one cut TD, one interception. You know, their running back list, you know, um, Pacquiao was their leading rusher. He only had 62 yards, a handful of other guys with like 20 or so. And then the receivers, you know. You know, just decent numbers, nothing spectacular, but they're able to put up 38 points because they had short fields. Look at Michigan State's yard total. Uh, Rocky Lombardi threw for over 300 yards, three touchdowns, and two interceptions, almost through 70% uh, completion percentage. So, can't I feel like we can't fault Rocky too much? You know, after that uh, first half interception that uh, got picked off. You know, um, I thought that, I thought he actually kind of helped keep him in the game. Second half, he was ineffective, I think, largely. Um, and then their, rush, their running attack was not very impressive with uh, Jordan Simmons. You know, three yards of carry, 44 yards. Um, Connor Hayward, you know, is the kind of the same Connor Hayward that we remember. And he was started today. He didn't get as many... Um, touches of Simmons, but still, uh, Elijah Collins, very ineffective, nine, nine attempts, three yards, and again, those six, those four fumbles were, uh, were huge, uh, I believe at least one of them was on a punt return, maybe two, I can't remember, so it was an ugly game from a turnover perspective, pretty much any way you look at it, unless you're a Rutgers fan, Honestly, I gotta say to Rutgers, congratulations on this win. Uh, you guys have been haven't been having a tough time, and everyone's got to get going at some point. So, Greg Schiano was basically their last successful head coach, and now it looks like you know it was probably a good decision to bring them back. I don't know if they're, I don't know if they're still the worst team in the Big Ten, but you know I think uh, I think there's a good chance that they might not be, but. I mean, obviously they beat Michigan State, so there's one team right there. But uh, I mean, they could be better than there's. There's gonna once it all shakes out, there's gonna be some bad teams. But I think there's. A, I think there's a good chance that there's a couple teams, you know, that Rutgers is better than. You know, they they could end up looking like an 11, 11th place kind of Big Ten team, something like that. Uh, Illinois has had a bit has had a bad loss to Wisconsin. On Friday, so I think there's every possibility that Illinois could reclaim that spot as the worst team, and uh, or close to the worst. Again, uh, I got I'm just grasping my mind, grasping my head on the concept that we might have the worst team in the Big Ten this year, um, in East Lansing because we lost to presumably the worst team, you know, at home. You know, home field advantage doesn't mean much. In today's college football, but it's a it's a home loss nonetheless. You know, Rutgers still had to travel, and they were uh, they looked like they were playing a much smarter game than Michigan State. They looked like on almost every turn, you know, when it came down to the intangibles, you know, just the um, instincts. I think Rutgers seems like they won every time, you know. Um, the way they were able to convert on third down, I thought was very impressive. Michigan State, not so much. 
a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, I'd say sack situations. Rocky was involved with the offensive line was, uh, very, un, un, very unimpressive. Um, especially pass blocking, I think. Um, but the, you know, the run blocking wasn't much better. So, yeah, I, I think it's safe to say that the offensive line underperformed today, you know, and these are a lot of them, the same cast and characters, you know, they're talking about AJ Curry, Brian Allen, you know, I don't think, uh, Unfortunately, I don't think he's ever going to be as good as any of his other brothers who were at playing that center position. They got a few new guards, and then they got Kevin Jarvis at the right tackle. Um, on offense, it looked... I, I think it looked too much like last year. They did too many of those screens, and, you know, just taking way too long for the plays to develop, I think, uh, passing the ball. You know they've they showed that they could they could do a quick you know kind of like a quick strike kind of thing with a quick pass which seemed like it was pretty effective at times. You know Michigan State's two touchdowns were both both scored that way if I remember correctly. I shouldn't say both. Uh, I did not see the final touchdown either because I downloaded the Fobu app and once it was thirty eight twenty I turned off the game. And then I was like, as I usually do, I wanted to come back and just see if there was anything miraculous happening. But it wasn't available to me, so um, <clears throat> the game, I did not see the last, I did not see what happened after Rusker, Rutgers scored their last touchdown. So, um, but obviously not much, you know, they got another touchdown, Rocky did, I'm assuming, you know, that's probably a big, you know, impact in his yardage total. So that's kind of a garbage time situation if we're being honest um so offensively you know just like it was very very reminiscent of last year um defensively though i thought i thought they played i thought they played decent i really was disappointed with their third down conversion percentage uh, on the defensive end and being able to stop those plays um i thought the secondary at times looked like they were uh, improving on last year and but they still get did get beat at times so that's concerning as well and i'm uh i'm just at i'm at a loss uh that they lost this game um to a certain degree but at the same time i'm not I'm not shocked by it it just makes me feel like the season is going to be just a very long upsetting season as we can see, they got Michigan next week. Not a good time to play Michigan after a tough, after a loss like this. They really, at the very least, they got to clean up the turnovers or make every attempt. You know, if you can limit it to under three turnovers, then that'd be a big improvement, I guess. You know, the bar is pretty low right now in that regard. But um, overall, just uh, I, at the end of the day, I can't blame Mel Tucker too much because look what he had to work with I mean the, the theme of this game should be kind of what did you expect you know with the D'Antonio retiring late COVID uh, no very 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 few uh, full contact practices you know just time to get your ducks in a row they didn't even have a normal off season so any way you look at it they were at a disadvantage I thought the play calling at the time was very questionable, going for it on fourth down. Um, I believe midway through the third quarter when they were trying to get close, uh, maybe to a tie game that was fourth and two. And they weren't very imaginative with the with the play call either. Both a couple times they went for fourth down, they just ran it up the middle and didn't, you know, get even close. So I, I look for the play calling I think has got to improve. Again, I know I know it's tough to work with, you know. I thought the way this game went down was unacceptable. But at the same time, you know, people should not be coming down hard on Mel Tucker yet. It's game one. You know, just like the NFL in a lot of ways. Um, some of these teams with new head coaches, you you gotta give them cut them a little bit of slack, you know. 
I think Mel Tucker deserves more slack than any other coach in football, to be honest with you. So, um, I think, uh, you know, it's unfortunate because uh, you want to be able to hold coaches accountable, but I don't think you can start making judgments until year two, in my opinion. I've said that before. But, you know, well, one thing i got to add is that uh, Michigan State cannot afford to go 0-8 this year. But, at the same time, 0-8 is very much in the realm of possibility right now. You know, Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State, those are losses. Um, Northwestern, Maryland, maybe Iowa. I think those are your only possibilities for wins. I do think they'll probably get one of those, but it's not a good situation to be in at all. You talk about not winning a game in the Big Ten, and that's, uh, you know, that's that's not not the way to build a program. It's hard to recruit to that, you know. Uh, if you're going to a recruit's house, you can sell five and seven to someone. You know, maybe you're three and five in conference. You know, you can sell six and six, new coach. You know, I d- definitely don't think you can sell an zero and eight season. That's going to be very tough. You know, Mel Tucker has put together a nice recruiting class so far, but that could quickly change if they lose games like this uh, this season. And they're gonna have to they're gonna have to they're gonna have to battle to try to be close in these games that they lose too. You know, games against like Iowa, Indiana. You know, maybe even North, maybe even Ohio State or Penn State. You got to find a way to keep it interesting and. Just show that this is going to be, this is an aberration year. You know, I just can't, I just can't, you know, I I still can't believe how difficult of a position Mel Tucker was put into. But, you know, you got to judge him on the game today. Didn't think the play calling was great. You know, um, one of his calling cards was we're not going to beat ourselves. Um, They absolutely beat themselves today. So that's, you know, it's the exact opposite of what, uh, what he was preaching there. Did I think that they were relentless? To some degree I did, you know, but that's football. You have to be relentless. You know, maybe that's not a good way of evaluating how you did today, you know, just because they didn't quit. I I don't think they quit. Some teams do quit at times, but I don't think the Spartans quit today. So I, give, I do give them credit for that. And, you know, he's working with... Uh, you know, he is working with Mark D'Antonio's players 100%. He doesn't even have, he doesn't have a single player on that roster that he tried to, you know, that he, you know, handpicked to come to Michigan State. So, um, I thought the offense, one thing that's interesting, it looked very similar to last year's offense. I don't know if I already mentioned that. But I think that in this situation, you kind of have to, you got all all the plays are designed for Mark D'Antonio. So, and with with not being able to run any of the practices, I think you do have to run a very similar offense to what uh, D'Antonio has run in previous years. And I think we saw that today. Luckily, I don't. We didn't see any jet sweeps, which was nice. Um, people are sick of those. Uh, we still did see those screen passes, um, those passes to the outside receiver, and. Uh, I don't know. They just can never figure out what the blocking is supposed to look like on those, it seems like. I think they maybe actually did get a couple of those to work today. But I want to give the Spartan Spartans a grade on offense. I give them a... I'd have to give them a D-. minus. The only, you know, saving grace is just, uh, you know, the relentlessness, the ability to, uh, you know... The ability, you know, to make some things happen, a few things happen. But overall, um, it was a completely unacceptable offensive effort. Um, Special teams played decent today. They got some good uh, field position at times, except um, they did have the fumbled kick return. I'd have to give them probably just a... I I think I'd have to give them a C plus. I think the special teams helped them more than they hurt them today. And... You look at uh, you look at defensive uh, defensively. I'd have to give them. I think I'd have to give them a. I think I'd have to give them a C plus, um, and as well. 
Um, I really don't think Rutgers scores 38 points if there's um, one turnover, two turnovers, anything like that. I think that, you know, you know, that's a, I'm, a, okay, sorry, it's actually uh, seven turnovers, I believe, for Michigan State. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, that's unbelievable. I have never seen my team, I haven't seen any team get seven turnovers in a game. And I'm sure it's happened before sometime, somewhere, but uh, not in my lifetime. Definitely not watching the Spartans or even Lions. So that's, a, that's, that's setting the bar pretty low there with the turnover aspect. Um, I think coaching grade, I'd have to give them a D plus. I think, uh, I don't think they, I don't think they, I don't think they really put their players in a position to win today with the play calling. Uh, we had some players who made plays, but um, it really, really did not inspire confidence what the coaches were doing, especially Jay Johnson. Again, we it, it sucks, but we have to take all this with a grain of salt with uh, Mel Tucker's, you know, being brand new and fresh to the Big Ten. Uh, I do think he can get the team playing together, playing better now that the... Uh, um, now that hopefully they're going to be practicing full time, you know, hopefully getting better each and every week. And I think at some point they'll be able to win a game or two. So that's my prediction for the season. The Spartans will not get shut out in the win column. So, and, uh, I feel like at this point, that's kind of a bold prediction, believe it or not. So, um, if the Michigan game next week got canceled due to COVID, that would not be the worst thing. That would not be the worst thing to happen for Michigan State. Um, not by a long shot. So, it was a tough game today to watch. You know, we're all up, we're all upset as fans. I'm not letting it ruin my weekend. I just wanted to come out, out here and vent a little bit. But, uh, glad to have college football back, I guess. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll just see where it goes from here because... I uh, can't get much worse than it did today. And, you know, I still believe in Mel Tucker. I want you guys to believe in him too. You know, this isn't like a Matt Patricia situation right now. This is just a, a very bad situation he's been put in. So, um, and it wasn't just COVID. It was Mark, you know. It was Mark just kind of, you know, not, you know. He kind of screwed the program a little bit. I know he didn't mean to, but by... Uh, by retiring in February, combined with COVID, that really made a next to impossible situation. And I just hope that these players can adapt to Mel Tucker's system. I hope that they're all in, you know, just because they were rec recruited by D'Antonio. And, uh, you know, we'll just go from there, you guys, because uh, there's nothing else we that's there's nothing else I can tell you at this point. And uh, it feels very similar to the Lions after week one just very disappointing where you almost you already want the season to be over this is probably going to go down as one of the worst football seasons on record from my standpoint you know unless I make some money with some FanDuel bets or something but or anything like that but let me know what you guys think um what do you guys think uh the culprit is for Michigan State where do you think they where do you think they go from here you know Besides turnovers, you know, you can say turnovers if you want, but what are the areas that Michigan State needs to improve on uh, the most greatly? And do you still believe in Mel Tucker? You know, uh, what do you think about him so far? Feel free to comment those things. Um, I, uh, I want, I'm going to, once again, just reiterate, I think you guys should be easy on the guy compared, compared to what he has, to, has had to go through. And you got to give him time. And uh, it's only time will tell, but uh, like, comment, subscribe, leave a comment. Thanks again for watching this, that, and the other, and enjoy the rest of your weekend.